Thank you. My name is Faye Colley. I'm an immigration attorney with Foster Kwan in private practice, and I'm also a member of AILA, the American Immigration Lawyers Association. And today I'd like to offer testimony only in part um, on HB um, 623, specifically Article 5, the provision that relates to business and occupational licenses issued by the state and provisional authorities. But Section 5.1, Title 2, Chapter 60, for anyone keeping count. Um, it's our concern that the introduction of employment authorization verification for the issuance of business and occupational licenses may adversely affect foreign national investment in the state of Texas and create unnecessary barriers to doing business in the state. The bill is written um, by my count, because I didn't find a complete list, there are about 506 different licenses, permits, certificates, or registrations that would be affected potentially by implementation of this provision. And that goes across, I think, our state ag, transportation, also the alcohol bureau, and po possibly the business, um, business license application process. Um, as proposed, the section requires that for applicants to demonstrate employment eligibility by um, demonstration of I-9 documents, and that would be a valid list A document or a valid list B and C document as on uh, per the I-9 um, instructions. And then that, those documents then are required to be um, verified for employment eligibility, I suppose, by that state licensing agency. Um, one concern here is that there's no mechanism listed in the bill in which um, the agencies who um, are verifying the employment, how they're going to do that. Um, I'm not sure if there's, you know, some sort of concept that they're going to touch base with DHS, use E-Verify, I don't know. But there is a concern here that they could also lead to an unfunded mandate as these states learn to sort of muddle through the translation of what employment authorization is and who and how to verify that. Um, and, and may even delay the processing um, of those business licenses um, to the applica individual applicants. Not only, and that, you know, that affects not only lawful immigrants who are here, but also those um, just U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents applying for the state as they, you know, try to figure out a way to verify their employment um, authorization. The um, Next concern I have is that the state agencies and the individuals who work there will be subject to the most common I-9 I mistakes that employers make that um, will add another bureaucrat bureaucratic layer to the issuance of these occupational or business licenses. And the three most common mistakes are the improper request for documents. You know, I need a, a valid document from A, B, and C. The improper um, requirement for the green card or an improper rejection of documents that are properly presented. And I have two more points. Um, I don't know that this provision would effectively serve to deter unlawful immigration, but it would certainly um, serve to deter, to deter um, treaty trader investors here on E and new office L visa holders because those investors who are looking to establish their businesses in order to qualify for the visa would uh, no, no longer be able to get their businesses licenses if they are required to demonstrate work authorization. And the last point, if I may, um, is that the direct, direct foreign investment by those treaty investors and um, new office owls in the state of Texas is within the range of $14.9 billion. The state benefits from those foreign national investors, and they also approximately generate three, um, 341,000 jobs within the state, and those are statistics from 2007.